Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Reiner, your host of the Independent Doctors of Pahrump, a TV show that airs Monday night on Channel 46. I want to remind you that I am a practicing physician in Pahrump, and I'm an independent practitioner, which means I am not bought by any insurance company or corporate medicine. We provide the highest level of care. We have nurse practitioners. We have other physicians, specialists who come to our office. Please come visit me. I'm at 1316 East Calvada here in the heart of Pahrump. Thank you. back with the last last uh, 15 minutes and congratulations to all your fans that are New England Patriot fans and Atlanta Falcon fans that are going to the Super Bowl well it's going I think it's going to be a great game you got yeah, the, you got shootout. you got the league's best defense going against the league's best offense well I think you got two good offenses I mean the Patriots have a good offense you got a then, great defense yeah and uh, you got Atlanta with uh, you know a really pretty good offense and uh, you know I predict it, you know, the Patriots will win. It'll, so. it'll be like 65 to 58. <laughs> I don't think it'll be that big of a shootout, but it, it, it'll be pretty good. Whoever uh, whoever has the ball last, will, last win. will win this game. I think that's true. That's how it'll be. That's right. I don't predict another 30-point no, blowout. No, it won't be a blowout. It won't that, be a blowout, that for that's sure. for sure. But some very, very good games in the playoffs. The yeah. Dallas... Uh, Green Bay playoff game was yeah that incredible. was exciting and I couldn't believe that guy who kicks all those field goals misses one in the in the Green Bay game right at the beginning I mean that was and in a dome too I mean that was really you know all my years in experience at that level kickers are like left-handed pitchers they just live in a they live in a place in a space of their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, you worked with a lot of professional no, sports. No, I worked with a ton of them, and, yeah. and, and the kickers were always the oddest. They're, were they really? Yeah. 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 Didn't you work with the Oakland Raiders? I worked with the Oakland Raiders. I worked with the with the with the Rams back back when Vince Ferragamo was <laughs> with the Rams. I just dated myself. Yeah. Then we worked with uh, the Dallas Cowboys in the '90s. Yeah. A lot of good experience. Yeah, there. a lot. Had a lot of fun. Yeah, had a lot of fun. Well, that's where you get all your experience for your injuries and mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. And so you've got a lot of, a lot of good history there. So you know, you, you know, well, every patient I send to you always has a good outcome. So well, I, I make sure to tell them when they go back to you. No, no, that's all right. You don't have to. Yeah, I know. It's, what a genius you are. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Uh, but, uh, we do have some fun. Though, yeah, that's, that's very good. So, um, no, I mean, you know, and your idea about mobility is very important. And a lot of times people get stiff and they get sore. And they need they need to be able to get pain-free long enough to become mobile. And that, and that helps well, them. I, you know, I like the idea that, that you and I have talked about as far as, you know, a lot of these people are on the open. Opioids. A lot yeah. of these people are on pain pills. You know, we're hoping to bring out to perump the acupuncture yeah. to go along with what we're doing. Just different, more natural avenues for these people who maybe don't want to be on the opioids as much as they are. Well, and that's where the marijuana comes in. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. I still get a lot of people signing cards. Um, I've got a lot of people who, you know, are looking for an alternative other than the opioids. The, the pharmacist, um, I had an interesting case again with one of the local pharmacies. Um, um, and um, so, well, I'll, we're going to take the call from Ray and I'll tell the story if we have enough time. Ray. Let's talk marijuana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's why I wore a green jacket. So go ahead. I got a flyer from, uh, from Chuck Augustine about what's happening in Colorado, what's probably going to happen in, in Nevada. What Nevada's trying to do, uh, the Governor Sandoval wants to add, besides the 15% excise tax on marijuana, he wants another 10% tax for education, which would 
make it almost impossible for people to go to these dispensaries and you need a medical use card to go to dispensaries anyway so it's a quandary but what's happened in colorado is when it was first decriminalized or legalized pot was five thousand dollars a pound it is now down to one thousand four hundred and eighty one dollars a pound and they think if it keeps going like that because more and more people are growing their own it'll go down to fifty fifty dollars an ounce it'll go that that low that you can actually buy it so what some of these states are doing because they know they cannot tax at a percentage if the price is so low what they're doing is they're just putting a fifty dollar tax on every ounce being sold so it's a way of getting around it but for the governor to say we got a 15 percent excise tax plus you're paying the sales tax at a dispensary let's add another 10 percent on it's almost like driving people out where you, you might need it for medical use or whatever. I believe if you have a medical use card, you won't have to pay that 10%. That's what the article said. So, I mean, it's a money-making proposition for the states, and they think they're just going to keep gouging the people. But the people are going to wake up and start growing it in their backyard, which it should have been right along. That was my first thought right off the get-go, Ray. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's absurd what's going on. And a lot of people really need this. And like you talk about opioids and stuff like that, where people using this marijuana, some of them are able to get off of yeah. the hard stuff, and yet they're making it hard and harder for us, even though now it's legal. And let me tell you, they're still arresting people for less than one ounce of marijuana. I see it in court every day. This is absurd. January 1st, it wasn't supposed to be happening, but they're doing what they want to do. And, it, and uh, the beat goes on. So, so I'll let you guys have the rest of the show, but I had to get that, that in. You have a good night, and you did a good show tonight. Thank you very right. much. Thank you, Ray. Uh, still arresting people? That's crazy. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Yeah, especially if you can grow your own. I mean, that's what the, was on the ballot. It passed. I mean, it basically said you could cultivate. I mean, that's what the whole idea on, on I, if I read the ballot question right, it said you know, be able to cultivate, purchase, or mm. whatever it is. So, I mean, the thing about having it and possessing it and being out in your car with it, I mean, that's a little different story. I mean, that, I mean, what are you doing, you know? Well, I want to talk about the fact that it's come down from $5,000 a pound to $1,000 a pound, and they expect it to go to even lower. What is that going to do to the drug cartels? Well, when you when you eliminate how much money they can make, right? I mean, you eliminate the the drug trade on the marijuana supply coming in, supply and demand, supply and demand. But you also um, they'll shift their e efforts to other drugs mm -hmm. um, such as heroin, which has made a comeback since they started to tighten up the oxycodone and the other stuff that people were using. The, the people want to get high, they're using heroin, mm -hmm. and they've seen a lot more heroin, and that's they're very dangerous because you know people people I mean, are they, dying. They're dying uh, of that, and I understand they're trying to make Narcan. Uh, someone told me the other day that Narcan was over the counter. Um, so in certain places they know they can't combat the heroin so they're hoping to get Narcan out there so that if you do overdose or somebody overdoses and you're with someone else they can hit you with the Narcan uh, to prevent you from dying so um, but there is that rare uh, population that has um, uh, reflexive uh, you know this pulmonary edema Mm -hmm. flash pulmonary edema from Narcan so um, that you could actually kill somebody with giving them Narcan when they're in an opioid um, problem so um, but they were going to die anyway yeah, I mean, what's the so difference? they'll wake up just enough time to, for their lungs to fill up um, and you might have a chance I don't but you can't really do anything about it once that happens I don't think it's reversible mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult to uh, they just fill up their lungs fill up with fluid and they they just drown so it's a very awkward situation but Anyway, so I had another call from one of these pharmacists in town who basically I had been reducing a patient's uh, opioids uh, over time and converting them from long acting. They were on too much short acting and converting them to long acting and then making adjustments on that amount as we do that. Mm -hmm. And I was in the process of doing that, but the, they, what the pharmacist was doing was they weren't going to fill the prescription because the numbers, they weren't looking at the total milli equivalents or mm -hmm. the morphine equivalents, they were just looking at the numbers. And they saw one number go up to 150 and the other number stayed at 180 and they would not fill the patient's prescription. 
until I, first thing was. You had, they, to, you had to explain to them the dosage. Too. Yeah, I had to explain to them what, what was <laughs> going are, on. And these I, are our pharmacists. These are our pharmacists. I said this patient's on 2,000 less milli, milligrams of morphine equivalents per month than what he was back in July. And you're holding his prescriptions. You know, because the numbers were different, and they were forgetting that one of the pre prescriptions was cut in half from a 30 milligram tablet to a 15 milligram tablet, and I mean, and it's just like you know, these people are, you know, it, it I don't know, it, it's insane, and what they're doing to patients to, that are trying, we're trying as at least at least I am, as a practitioner, trying to control patients on their opioids and trying to get them to wean down a little bit. Um, it's very important, but you've got pharmacies that just, you know, uh, their corporate people are, you know, hammering them. And uh, the pendulum just hasn't swung far enough. Three years ago, they were filling whatever you wanted yep. to fill. I, I mean, they, they, didn't, they didn't ask a question. But because Walgreens gets in trouble, now they're all running scared. And, uh, you know, it hasn't stopped. So, you know, and you're right. I mean, this thing about you know, taxing and, you know, Nevada has turned into an incredible tax hound. Um, they passed a huge tax last year, you know, thanks to people like Oscarson and people like that, that are supposedly fiscal conservatives, but aren't. And, you know, I mean, registering your car, 700 to thousand dollars for a brand new car in Nevada. Um, in Texas, it's like a hundred dollars. So I, I don't, you know, they, they're just finding ways to squeeze people. You know, the gaming tax maybe, you know, doesn't make enough money because people don't have enough money to gamble um, but you know they're finding other ways other than state income tax to squeeze people and you know it just they governments need to learn not to spend so much money I mean mm -hmm. they're just giving shit away to people that for what I mean it, it just you know it's got to stop somewhere um, and uh, but I don't know where and I don't know if it's in my lifetime but anyway well if uh, they're gonna give it away I'd sure like to see, it, see him give it away to the veterans and to the, you mm -hmm. know, people who have actually earned it, you know, putting their lives on the line. As well, I, to, and I think the tax, you know, if Trump really does come through with his, his income tax plan and there's less income tax, people will have more money to spend. And that finally might help the economy a little bit, too. And it's certainly his infrastructure and rep repatriating all the company's money mm -hmm. that's overseas because they move their companies overseas. And if the money is made overseas, it can stay overseas and it doesn't pay taxes until you move it back. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see what happens. But we're out of time. Great show tonight, guys. Yeah, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. And uh, V-A-X-X-E-D, right? Vaxxed. So look that up. We'll be back next week. Thank you. Good night.